Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Friday. It's Daryl here. It is bright and freaking early, man. It's 3 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, something happened to me yesterday at the end of my bike ride. And uh, I, I didn't think to talk about it until this morning. I was looking over stories to talk about here in this video today. And all of a sudden, you know, every time this thing, this incident that happened to me yesterday afternoon pops into my head, I, my adrenaline starts pumping. I get all nervous. I, I get like instant anxiety. Uh, let me say this. I've been clean and sober. You guys are probably getting tired of hearing this, but uh, I've been clean and sober since October 23rd of 2006, uh, 17 years and about eight months. And I've had very few run-ins with the police. Uh, I think I've only been pulled over in the last oh, 17 and a half years. I've probably been pulled over, I think, twice for talking on the phone or having the phone in my hand or texting on the phone because that's very, it's a big no-no here in Connecticut. Um, other than that, I, I really don't do anything illegal. You know, I, I really am, a, seriously, I'm a law-abiding, productive citizen these days when I used to be a full-blown addict uh, 17 and a half years ago. I mean, full-blown junkie addict. And, uh, okay, so let me tell you about my bike ride. I take this bike ride. I work out for four hours. After this video, at 4 a.m., I start weightlifting. I weightlift for an hour. Then I go for a three-and-a-half-mile walk around, the town, around town here about five or six in the morning. And then... I get on the treadmill and do four and a quarter miles for a total of over seven miles. Then I get on my bike and I do about a 15 mile ride every single day. Uh, it's the whole addictive thing, the addictive personality. I gave up the drugs and alcohol and I am now addicted to exercise. That's basically the bottom line. Okay, so like I said, the last thing I do is my bike ride. And it was a nice, beautiful day here in Bristol, Connecticut yesterday. Let me fill you in. Uh, I live uh, about a quarter mile, a half mile from the Bristol Police Station. And uh, they just built a new, there was a parking uh, lot, a part of, uh, paved parking lot behind the building. And there was one on top of the building. And they built a new parking lot behind the building. It's a, it's a parking, uh, parking garage, a three-story parking garage. It's brand new. And not too many people park in it yet. It's mostly policemen and firemen and uh, the town hall, the city hall is right there. So people do go into the city hall for business. But it's not very full. It's brand spanking new. And I love riding my bike in it. Let me fill you in. I usually go for my 15-mile bike ride. And I've gotten in the habit of doing this. I come back towards my place. You know, I go all the way out. I go like in maybe in a elliptical uh, all the way out and come back down back to my house like you know maybe seven miles out and seven miles back and it's it's only about a quarter mile from my house right right near my house I can practically see it from my place and uh, I've gotten into habit of going into this parking garage on the way back I, it's like a sprint you know there's three levels so there's like six different ramps you know the two go up each level and I sprint, you know, I turn into the parking garage. This is at the end of my ride. And I turn into the parking garage and I just, I just pedal as, as hard as I can. I, I, I want to see how fast I can go up the garage. You know, that's, that's my thing. That's what's going through my head. And I do this every day. And I get to the very, very top. And I go to this corner up top. There's very few cars up at the top. Uh, if there's any cars, they're usually like, like city cars, like town and rec or uh, the highway cars or police cars. Uh, you know, parked up on top, and I go to the very far most top part, and I get into a corner, I park in a corner on my bike, I stay on my bike, and I stand up on the pedals, so the bike is braced in the corner, and I just let the sun beam down on my face, and you know, I just kind of meditate, seriously, I do this every day, I've never told, nobody knows I do this, this is the first time I've talked about it, and I, I love doing this, you know, I love just feeling that sun on my face at the end of the ride, and I just kind of calm my heartbeat down, you know, so I do this sprint up the, up the ramps, and then I get to the top, and I park right in the, I got this little spot I park, and you can see the rubber on the wall where I pull the bike up, this will play, this will come into play in a second. You know, and I love, I like, I'll see which way the clouds are going. You know, I'm like, I'm a weather geek and stuff like that. And that's what I do. Okay, so yesterday, I'm heading towards the parking garage. And I see a policeman parked right near the police station. And he's pointing right towards the garage, sitting in his car. You know, and it, it, he looks scary just sitting there in the car. You know, and I'm like, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to pull in the parking garage. So I, I actually say, I actually single. And the only thing I don't do like I'm supposed to do is wear a helmet. So I pull into the parking garage and I start going up. I get to about the second or third level. 
and I realized he's behind me. I, 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 he pulled, he, he started the car up and followed me in the garage. So I just, I keep going, you know, he's, he's like one ramp behind me coming up. And I go all the way up to my corner, you know, I go right to the corner and I see him coming up now. Now he's blocking the ramp and he's coming right up towards me. There's no one else up there. We're at the very top on the roof of the parking garage and there's a cop coming up in, in his car. And I pull right to the corner and I, you know, I stand up on the pedals and I'm just standing there. I put, you know, just put my head back and I keep looking over and he's, he's coming up to me. He's coming to me. You know, and my anxiety just, you know, I, I got to ask myself this, you know, because I like to take risks, you know, and it's always going through my head that people might be suspicious. Why is this bike going in here? You know, why is this guy on the bike in the park in the cop parking garage? You know, I wear all black with black gloves and stuff. And, you know, I'm all my bike's black. My, you know, I look a little suspicious. I do look a little suspicious. And I have to ask myself, do I do this on purpose? You know, I, I, I really have to ask myself that now. And just this morning, I thought about this. Back when I was nine years old, my father passed away. And uh, my mom started dating a policeman. And he did some terrible things to me for about three years. Bad, bad things. And I have to wonder if this is me getting, you know, confronting my fears. I, I you know. And the fact that I used to use for two decades. I was terrified of cops, you know. I was terrified of, you know, seeing a cop behind me like this. You know, and I have to wonder, maybe this is part of confronting my fears. You know, now I could, you know, now I have no reason to fear cops, or at least I didn't think so. You know, so anyway, uh, so I'm standing on the bike now. And he gets out of the car, and he is a big dude, man. I mean, you know, like, I got, I got some muscle and stuff, but this dude is huge, man. And I'm 6'3", and muscular, and he, this guy's got to be 6'4", 6'5", shaved head. His shoulders are like twice as big as mine. Tat tattoos all up and down the arms, and he's and he's just strolling up with that cop attitude. So, what brings you up here today? You know, and and then all of a sudden it occurs to me: there's no one in the parking lot, right? I'm at the very top in the corner. Nobody's walking out. Nobody can see. I'm actually leaning against the wall that goes and drops down three stories. You know, and I'm standing up on the pedals, so it'd be <laughs> incredibly easy just to kind of boop. You know, push me over the wall. That all just goes through my head all of a sudden in a flash, you know. But I'm like, no, nah, man, he's a cop. He's cool, you know. It, calm down. So he walks up and he starts asking me, what are you doing here? And it just, you know, because I'm, you know, not up to no good, it just, you know, the, the truth is easy to spot. You know, I realized this now that I stopped using. I realized how obvious it was a lot of times when I used to lie when I was using. You know, and I just told him, I said, you know, this at the end of my ride, I said, I live right over there. And I told, I told him the building. And I said, uh, I, I, I kind of, I, I, it's kind of like a sprint at the end of my ride. You know, I, and then he, he saw all this behind me, you know, and then the fact that I pulled, you know, I knew right where I was going. I went right up to the top corner. You know, like I said, there's rubber marks on the wall where you can see where my bike, I pulled the bike in the same spot. You can actually see where I pulled the bike in with the rubber on the wall, the rubber on the cement. So it all clicks. And he, then he's, he's still asking me questions because he's still, you know, and he's like, he says, the only people, he says, well, he, he says, you got to admit it's a little suspicious because there's all police cars up here. And I don't know if you're coming up, you know, police, uh, police private vehicles. So I don't know if you're coming up here to mess with the cops' cars and stuff, you know. And what do you say to something like that? Because no matter what you say, I think you sound guilty. I, I just went, no, no. And that's, you know, what do you say to something like that? You know, because that's, that was, you know, that's, has nothing to do with why I was there. But you get that guilty feeling that no matter how you answer that, you're going to sound like too, like, you know, because I used to lie all the time, you know, 17 and a half years ago. And I'm just like, no, no, you know, I said, I come up here and you can see, you know, I went right to the corner, you know, I, I think you can see. Then he says this, he says, the only, he says, the only other people who come up here are crazy people. And then he slips and he starts saying, he st I think he starts talking about something that just recently happened there that I have no idea. But he says, the only other people that come up here are crazy people. And then he goes something about, well, that guy was over there. And then he, then he catches himself, and, you know, and he stops. So I'm, all of a sudden I'm like, you know, there must have been an incident up on top of this roof with somebody that was a little mentally... You know, I'm bound, you know, because he, he kind of slipped there. And, uh, you know, and then he, he, you know, within two or three minutes, you know, we're chatting. I said, no, nah, man, you know, 
to sprint up here. I love sitting up in the sun. It's the end of my ride. I live right over there. You know, I do it. I said, and then I said, I do it every day. And I figured you guys would get used, you know, people would get used to seeing me. And he goes like this. He goes, no, he goes, I've been, I, I come out at this time every day and I never seen you up here, you know? So he's still kind of grilling, you know, he's kind of contradicting me like I'm lying or something, you know, like questioning me. You know, and I'm, I don't know, I, I don't come up at the exact time every day. Like to yesterday, I laid outside at the park for a half hour. So it was at a different time, you know, it was a slightly different time. It's not the same minute every day that I'm up there, you know. So anyway, and then he goes, he starts commenting, you know, he starts, and he, this guy's huge. And I'm wondering if, you know, he's not the least bit intimidated. I'm a big guy, six foot three, and I'm standing on my pedals. So I'm over seven feet. I'm still standing on my bike. You know, and he's, he's not, at least, you know, because I think he knows I, he's got me in the corner up against the wall, you know, with the, 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 the three stories down on the other side. So he's, he's you know, and he's big arms, tats all over. And he goes, I wouldn't want to, you know, if you're just coming up here to enjoy the sun and it's part of your ride, I wouldn't want to interfere with that. Because I was wondering if he was going to tell me not to do this anymore, you know. And uh, the day before that, I went by two firemen on the way down and I, you know, going down, I don't know if people would complain. I try to keep my speed down, you know, but I'm doing a good 20, 30, 25 miles an hour. You know, I'm watching for cars pulling out, but you know, it could be a safety issue with me on a bike, you know, cause they don't hear a bike coming, you know, and I'm, I come down the garage. I could see them telling me not to go up there anymore, but it is a public garage. So he really can't tell me not to do that anymore. You know, so he just, you know, he just leaves it at that. He didn't ask, he didn't even ask me my name, which I found interesting. Didn't ask me for ID, thankfully, because I didn't have any ID on me. If he started to ask me what, or what I had in my backpack, because I carry, I carry a ton of stuff in my backpack. I carry air pumps and uh, fix a flat and wrenches, uh, towels, uh, vice grips. You know, and if he started asking me to go through, you know, what's in your backpack or do you have ID? I could, I, I could imagine my hands would start shaking or something, you know, I, I don't know. But he didn't ask me that. Uh, so it was interesting, you know, and I, I, and after this happened, you know, just this morning, I kind of avoid, I avoid thinking about it because it scares me. Because now I don't know what I'm going to do today. I don't know if I'm going to continue doing this. I probably will because he didn't tell me, you know, nobody told me not to. He knows me by now, and I, if I stop doing it, it might look suspicious. You know, it might look like yeah, you know I was lying about going up there every day. If I stop doing it, you know, so I'm a little nervous about it. I am, you know. And I tell you what, though, it's nice being on the right side of the law. It really is. You know, there's nothing I do illegal these days. I put my seatbelt on. I don't talk on the phone. I stop at stop signs. My car is completely legal. My license, my insurance. Uh, Everything. I, I'm a 100% law-abiding person. It feels good until a cop comes up to you. Then it feels scary again. All right. Dude, I got more videos today. I got videos about guys who put stickers, NRA stickers, or here in Connecticut, CCDL, Connecticut Citizens Defense League, on their big trucks telling everybody else that they're packing. I got a video. I want to talk about that. And it's got to do with... Uh, the uh, off-duty security guard taking out the 17-year-old black kid at the sporting goods store. That's my video. It's all made and set to go. That's next. You guys have a good Friday.